Next question that came in, David, for all of the failed talk about a civil war after the election results, what could actually start a second American civil war? So let's talk about this in, in a couple of different ways. First of all, a lot of times when people talk about an American civil war or the division of the United States into two countries, they are talking about red states, blue states. And the difficulty of that is that the geographical boundaries of what red state, blue state would be um, are relatively uh, loose in the sense that r many red states still have 30, 35, 40, even 45 percent Democratic voters. Many blue states still have 30, 35, 40, 45 percent Republican voters. So this idea you know, it, it, it's not a requirement for a civil war that the lines be super clear. If you look at Italy in the early 40s, you had this north south thing, but the north was filled with those sympathetic to the south and vice versa. You can look at sort of modern civil wars, Syria and Ukraine. They are more really sustained uh, sectarian insurgencies than clear civil wars the way we had the Union and the Confederacy um, in the American Civil War. The other really interesting thing to consider is that just for the sake of a thought experiment, if we want to think about a second American Civil War along Confederacy Union lines, the Confederacy is completely financially uh, unsustainable. And we've talked about this before. In the United States, you have all of these federal programs into which states pay and out of which they receive benefits, they receive money. The blue states dramatically subsidize the red states. And so you have a lot of states in the US, overwhelmingly red states run by Republicans that were it not for being subsidized by money from blue states, they wouldn't be viable. And what you would have if you were to divide the country in the imaginary second civil war into factions that sort of line up with civil war, union and confederacy. If there were to be a separation, the confederacy would be in 2020. They would be bankrupt very, very quickly um, and it would be a desperate situation there. So it, it also is uh, practically speaking um, not going to it, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense now in terms of now that we've gotten all of that out of the way, what could really get the United States to boil over? Maybe not into what we would call a civil war, but sustained and major sort of sectarian uh, uh, violence and and fighting. One of the things that corporations and the uh, financial sector and others are uh, really effectively doing in the United States um, is they have created a situation where a lot of people are just kind of happy enough being able to be on the couch watching football on Sundays and um, living their lives. Not that everybody's lives are perfect. There's tons of hunger, poverty, everything in the United States. But there is enough people due to cheap stuff from China and credit card debt and all of these instruments that are available. You've got a lot of people who their threshold for when they're going to go out in the streets and do anything is really, really high, and it creates a natural disincentive for people to do it. At the same time, low wages, the low savings rate of the United States, the financial instability that so many people experience also makes it tough to go out in the streets because you need to buy food the next day for your family. And if you miss a day of work and it's unpaid and you're not gonna be able to do that and you need to be able to not have your car repossessed so that you can go and drive and get the food. The point is, this is a system that perpetuates itself. The status quo perpetuates itself by keeping keeping people sort of just happy enough that they would re need a really high bar to be met before they would go out fighting for anything. And at the same time, you keep them in a precarious enough position that they can't afford not to work for very long. That is how you preemptively and systemically suppress an uprising. So I don't know what the answer is about what it would take for something to boil over to be almost like a civil war. You also don't need everybody. You don't need everybody either fat and happy or in squalor 
to have enough people to really cause chaos. There's no doubt about that. Um, but it is actually difficult to imagine what would rise to that level. Um, I think that, you know, if Donald Trump were to figure out a way to steal the election, I think you would see protests like we have not seen for I don't want to say how long decades for sure. Would it rise to a civil war? I don't even know. I'm curious to hear from you.